Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Hey guys, Amber here with A Maple Family, and today I want to give you a quick walkthrough of a game our family has really been enjoying called Kingswood. Now this has a little bit of a rondelle type mechanic. It does play one to five players. The recommended age is 10 and up, and it takes about 15 to 45 minutes to play, depending on that player count. So let's check out how to play Kingswood by 25th Century Games. Now in the game Kingswood, we are going to be playing asymmetric heroes, and we're gonna be fighting monsters in order to gain fame or favor from the king. The game end is triggered when one of the players reaches 20 fame. So to get started, I've put out our central fame board, which is basically our score tracker for the game. I've also put out our heart, sword, spell book, and coin components, just so all players can have them within reach. Now within the game of Kingswood are going to be all of these location cards, and you're gonna want to pull out the ones that say common locations. That means that those are used in every game you play. In addition to the five common locations, you can go ahead at random and pick one of the special locations. These special locations will add a little bit of variety every time you play Kingswood. You can go ahead and put the rest of the special locations back in the box. You only need one per game. Now go ahead and find the common location that says forest. That's going to actually go right above our fame tracker. You can then shuffle the other five locations and randomly put them out around the fame tracker. Go ahead and grab the meeples that come with the game. You should have three blue meeples, which are our adventure meeples, as well as a red meeple that is the king's guard. You can go ahead and just place the king's guard in the middle of the fame board. You're gonna wanna place one adventurer meeple on the tavern, the market, and the blacksmith. That'll be the starting locations for these particular adventurers. Now it's time to set up our monsters. The monster deck looks like this. On the back, you're gonna see a chapter one and chapter two monsters monster cards. Go ahead and sort them out and gather all the chapter one in one pile and the chapter two in another pile. Looking at just your chapter one monster cards, go ahead and remove any cards that do not display the number of people you are playing with. For instance, we're playing with two players in this particular scenario. This card would remain in the deck. On the other hand, this card here does not show my player count, so it'll be returned to the box. Now let's take just the chapter two monsters. Go ahead and give them a good shuffle and they are going to form the base of our monster deck. The chapter two monsters will then go above the forest and form the base of our monster deck. Next, grab your chapter one monster cards. Go ahead and give these a shuffle. These are gonna be placed directly on top of our chapter two monster cards, completing our monster deck. At this point, we can go ahead and reveal our first three monsters. And the last part of setup is choosing our guild card. You can either select one at random or you can read each guild's asymmetric ability and make your decision that way. Each guild is not only gonna offer you a special ability, but at the bottom of the card, the starting resources that that guild is going to give you. For our two player game, I will just go ahead and pick two at random. The rest of the guild cards can go back in the box. Each player is also going to have a matching score tracker, which can be placed next to the fame board. Let's go ahead and gather each player's resources. Now let's quickly talk about these resources. As you can see, the heart, sword, and spell book have a colored side as well as a black and white side. When you earn resources, you don't lose resources. As you use them to fight monsters, you simply exhaust them, turning them over to their black and white side. When you visit different village actions, you can pay a coin to refresh certain resources. So let's talk about taking a turn. In order to take a turn, the first thing you're gonna do is look at the blue adventurers on the board. You can choose one of them to move. So for instance, let's say that I want to move this adventurer at the tavern. You can always move to a location adjacent to you for free. But if you wish to adventure further, you're gonna have to pay a coin for every location you skip. So for instance, if I want to move to the forest, I would need to pay one coin back to the general supply for this village that I skipped over. But for this example, let's just say that I move from the tavern to the market. 
you may always use the ability of the location where your adventurer starts. So for this particular one, I can pay a coin and gain a heart. In addition to using this location, you're also able to use the location that your adventurer moved to. And for the market location, I simply gain three coins. The last step when you take this explore action is that you have to place the King's Guard meeple on the location where your adventurer started. So when choosing to explore these villages, just remember you cannot stop in a location if another adventurer is already in that location, or of course, if the King's Guard is already placed there. You can only move to open locations in the village. Another option you have on your turn besides exploring is to collect. This allows you to remove the King's Guard meeple from its current location and simply place it to the side. You can then gain two coins from the supply. Let's take a look at this blacksmith village. For the most part, each village is going to give you two options and you can select one of them. Typically, it's going to allow you to pay a coin to refresh your resources or pay a coin to gain a resource. Let's take a look at our special location for this turn just to give you an idea of what these may add to the game. This special location is called the Witch's Hut. When you land on this location, you can use the ability of the location of the King's Guard. Now let's talk about the forest location. When one of your adventurers enters the forest location, you may fight any number of the face-up monsters that are there. Each of these monster cards does dictate what is needed on them to defeat them. So to defeat this monster, I need to have a spell book and a coin. So in order to claim this, I simply take my spell book to the exhausted side and pay one coin back to the general supply. Some of the monsters, like this one, allow me to refresh a heart or gain some type of bonus for defeating them. And at the bottom here, I can see that I have gained one fame. So I can move my score tracker to number one. You'll then want to place your monster in your play area because in addition to offering you one-time bonuses, some of the monsters offer you endgame scoring incentives. Now I do have the option to defeat these other two monsters, but I don't have any more spell books, so I have to be done fighting in the forest. At the end of my turn, I'll go ahead and refill up to three monsters in the forest, and then it will be my opponent's turn. Gameplay is going to continue just like this until one of the players reaches 20 fame points. Once players have had equal turns, we can go ahead and tally up any bonus points awarded for collecting certain combinations of monsters. And as always, the player with the most fame points wins the game. Well, as always, I like to go ahead and play through a couple turns. One, because it's super fun, and two, I think it helps give you an idea of how the game actually plays. So let's have our first player be Krom. Now, Krom is unique because whenever you exhaust a heart, you may refresh a spell book. So he actually starts out with two exhausted spell books, but every time that I use a heart to fight a monster, which I don't even have any yet, I will be able to refresh those spell books. So that's kind of a cool give and take that Krom has. And then over here, we have Silver shield and I just drew these at random when setting up the game. The first time you defeat a monster each turn, you may refresh a sword. Well, I think my best bet then is going to be to get, so we're going to have Krom go first and I would like to get him some hearts. So I am going to visit the tavern because at the tavern I can pay one coin and get a heart. And then I can really only move Krom to the market because there's already an adventurer at the academy. So I will go to the market and get my three more coins. And now I'm going to have to move the Red Guard to the tavern, which is where my adventurer started, and now this space is blocked off. So now it is Silver Shield. I'm looking out at the monsters, and everybody needs spell books, and he has no spell books. So I think they are going to go here and pay a coin to gain a spell book. Unless stated otherwise, whenever you get resources, they always start out on the refresh side. So again, I can really only move this adventurer this way because the guard is blocking here. So I'm gonna go to the witch's hut. Now the witch's hut says that I can use the ability at the location of the king's guard. So that is awesome. I am gonna pay a coin because the king's guard is at the tavern and if I pay a coin, I can get another heart. Okay, so now that my turn is done, we are gonna move the king's guard here 
here, which is where my adventurer started. And now it is Krom's turn. Well, I'd really like to refresh Krom's spell books, but the Red Guard is blocking that um, academy, so I'm not able to do that. So I think instead I'm actually going to get more coin and move this adventurer. And I'm also gonna pay a coin to get another heart because my heart and spell books kind of work well together, which means the red guard is now blocking off the market space. Now it is Silver Shield's turn. All right, I think what I'm gonna do is actually move this one here and I am going to use the location of the King's Guard, which is gonna get me three coins. And I'm gonna move this adventurer here. And I am going to buy another spell book from the Academy. So again, my red guard is gonna have to head over to the witch's hut. All right, so now it is Krom's turn. I definitely want to refresh all of Krom's spell books. So at the Academy, you can pay one coin and you can actually refresh all of your spell books. Now I think I'm gonna take Krom uh, into the forest, which means I have to pass over two locations, meaning I have to pay two coins. And before I forget, I am gonna move the Red Guard to the Academy, and now I can fight as many monsters as I wish. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is attack this Wraith, which needs two spell books, so I will exhaust those by turning them face down on their black and white side, and I also need to exhaust two hearts. And the benefit of this is at end game, I score plus one for each ghost that I have defeated. So this is one of those end game bonuses that I can strive for to accrue more points uh, at the end of the game. This is also going to get me three fame points. So I will move my tracker there. And because I've exhausted two hearts, I can actually refresh my spell books. Now I can keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and get this one here and I am going to use one of my swords and I have to pay one coin back to the supply. And that is going to get me one more fame. And I can go ahead and do this last one as well, which I'll need to exhaust a spell book and another coin to the supply. And I also get to refresh one of my hearts. And you know what? I missed the bonus on this one. It says reveal and add an extra monster to the forest. So I should have done that first. Oh my goodness. And I can actually take this as well, which is a spell book and a coin. Okay, and that also lets me refresh one heart. So I will do that as well. Wow, that was a great, great turn for me. I ended up with three, four, five, six. Okay, so there are no more monsters and I can't refresh that unless uh, like this one here, it tells me that I can add a monster to the forest. At the end of my turn, I simply refill. So there are three monsters revealed in the forest and then it would be my opponent's turn. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop there because I feel like we were able to really tackle everything and let you see how all of the elements of the game work. Our family has loved this game, especially my eight-year-old absolutely loves this game. And I find it really fun as well. Josh and I have played together and there's also a solo variant, which I'll be playing soon on the channel. As always with these videos, I just wanna give you an idea of how the game plays and if you think Kingswood is a good fit for your gaming table. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes.